Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Coaching. My name is Kevin Brits and uh, I'm an executive coach, trainer and international leadership facilitator, host of the Lunchtime series where we add value to people's lives happening every day at 12 o'clock on ebizradio.com. Today we have uh, uh, someone interesting chatting to us. He has an interesting story, so it's going to be, it's going to, and I love the topic we're going to talk about. Um, he is the New Insights Certified VIP Life Coach and the founder of Influential Life Coaching, Dr. Matt's. Abedzidis. Is that correct, Dr. Matt? <laughs> well done. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Dr. Matt, so welcome to the Lunchtime Coaching Sessions and uh, thank you for making some time for us today. Thank you for having me. Don't you want to tell us, because, uh, you know, uh, the, the first question I asked is tell me what, what doctor you are. I think you, you have such an interesting story, and I would love to sort of get your insight about who you are. And um, also then just to preface what we are going to sp uh, be chatting about today. Right, so a little bit about my background. I was originally born in South Africa. Um, yeah. Then a few years later, we went back to Greece and we lived there for six years. And it was during those years when I had a pet dog that got injured and uh, I didn't know how to help the poor puppy. And I felt so sorry for him. I decided at eight years of age, I was going to become a vet. And so that's where my passion for animals came from. Um, and that's why I started to become a veterinary surgeon, which is what I am by profession. Uh, at the same time, I also had a passion for writing and I had a passion for psychology, which yeah. led me to writing a book and studying life coaching, which is, and I do all three today. So, and that kind of leads us to the topic of today, which is limiting beliefs, because I started out having all these ideas which were vetoed by almost everybody. Yeah. And um, I just stuck to my guns and I went for all three. And I'm here to help people with my life coaching skills to do exactly the same for themselves. So, I mean, it's such an interesting topic because I think, um, you know, from my perspective, uh, I, I also... Um, very often when I do some leadership um, training or coaching or executive training for them, uh, for any leaders in the world, there's there's a lot of limiting beliefs that, that come with that, right? So eventually, you know, you have people carrying wonderful big titles um, and then you, you chat to them and they have, they have this, this fear of, of confidence. Um, and, and you kind of go, wow, that's, that's, that's such a juxtaposition that you're in because yeah, you're you have this title, you this important man or woman, um, and yet you know you have these things. And I think a lot of people have. It's based in perception where people people just assume and they kind of look at um, uh, people that go through life as as really successful. Um, and thanks to social media, <laughs> that really lends itself to to that uh, process. But I think you know what a, a lot of people don't realize is there's there's a lot of people in the world that, that carry around limiting beliefs all the time. Um, is that something that you've also experienced that you come across with, with uh, in, in what you do? Absolutely. And what, what I, I find that in every single client that I speak to, I find that in every group that I speak to. And yeah. the truth is we are born with only one fear as, as babies. And that is the yeah. fear of falling. It's a whole moral reflex. Have you ever seen a baby when you've just kind of released it a little bit and the arms go out, that's the yeah. moral reflex. And they're afraid of falling. That is the only fear we are born with. Every yeah. other fear we have, every other limiting belief we have, we have created ourselves. And so it's a human thing. It's a human nature that we have. And everybody has it because everybody is a human being. Yeah, you know, and it's it goes. I always refer to back to to you know a, a lot of the time that I've done training. Um, you know, babies aren't born um, sexist or racist or you know those added ons. Um, that's a learned uh, a learned example of something. And Absolutely. you know, um, like you're mentioning here, you know, the 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 fact that we we have that fear for thought, that's something we're born with. But the rest is learned behavior. It's something that that we decided whenever we decided it uh, in, in our past in our history, um, and to kind of understand how how to how to get past that or take a learning from that. But one of the things that um, uh, what I'm intrigued by, and I think it's it's a good conversation point, is everything we currently want 
and and we don't have is outside our comfort zone. It's one of the the prefacing uh, pointers that you point out. Don't you want to speak to us about what that is and um, why you say that? Uh, okay, so basically, in in when I first meet a person as a, yeah. as a coaching client, I like to get a, a snapshot of where they are in their lives. And I'll often ask them to score their different life areas out of 10. And some of them give you a score of 2. Some of them give you a score of 10. The truth is there's no right or wrong answer in that score. It's just I want to know where that person is at in that moment. Yeah. However, if they score a 10, that is the limit of their comfort zone. That's as much as they know. And... They, they often say the only enemy to a great life, uh, the only enemy to a fantastic life is a great life. So <laughs> we go up to what is a great life, and that's within our comfort zone because that is what we know and what we are comfortable with. But the minute we go beyond that boundary, we start to get uncomfortable because there are things that we don't know, and we don't know if we're going to be able to deal with them. Yeah. However, a lot of the things that we don't have are sitting out there somewhere. And we need to grow past that limit of what we know into a point where we start learning again. And when we start learning, we grow. And when we grow our comfort zone, we envelop what's outside our knowledge base. Yeah. Um, and that's what I help people do. I push them off their comfort zone. And I warn people when they come to me that I'm going to challenge everything they tell me on purpose. Because I want them to push themselves beyond that. Yeah. And it's so often that we've tried new things only to realize it was actually not that difficult. And then we do it again afterwards without any fear. And so that's what I want people to do, to realize that anything is possible, but you just, you really have to try first. Yeah, you know, I, as you're talking, I'm just thinking of moments that that's applied to my life. Um, you know, when I, when I started coaching quite specifically, way back where I was about 26 years old, um, one of the concepts that I really struggled with was you don't know what you don't know until you know you know. Um, and you're kind of going, well, I don't want, what the hell does that mean? I don't even understand what I don't know that I don't know. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like, it's so ob. But when you get your brain wrapped around what that means and you're kind of going, oh, wow, yeah, I didn't know I didn't know that, right? You, it, it sort of starts landing and you're kind of going, oh, so if that's true, what is the unexpected possibility of what could possibly come from this moment? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly your brain kind of like it sort of opens um, and suddenly you start noticing everything that you haven't paid attention to or that you didn't know you weren't paying attention to. So, <laughs> so it is kind of a crazy concept, but, uh, you know, it, it really... Even more growth. Yeah, exactly, right? And I think um, I remember a story when I, I, was, I was like really, really wanting to... Uh, I, I set it out as a goal and going, yeah, I want to do training with Sun International. I want to be able to to be connected to an international company. And I, I just kept thinking, like, how do I do this? And going and going. And eventually, by the time I got to the airport and ready for the training the next day, I stood in the hotel room going, oh, wow, I didn't realize that, you know, it, it, it wasn't such an unreachable thing. Right. And then suddenly my brain was a little bit let down. Um, but what I knew in that moment was, oh, OK, cool. So um, the things I really want to, to get to, the things I really want to put my focus on um, are very, very possible. All I need to do is actually challenge myself enough to want to get there and to ask the right kind of questions. Um, and I mean, you mentioned growth. Um, uh, tell us more about why that's important, because I, I think it's a, such a it's such a big one. I think growth is important because it's one of those fundamental needs that every human being has. Um, in my teachings, I often talk about six fundamental needs that every human being has, and one of them is growth. And if we don't, you know, one of we didn't learn a lot at school, but one of the things we did learn is that we need to pass all our subjects every year so that we can move on to the next standard or grade. Yeah. And that's growth. And ideally, we should be applying that principle to our lives as well. So when we finish school or university, ideally, we should be 
improving every year. So look at where you are this year, and by next year you should be in a better spot. And so you keep growing. And if that doesn't happen, that's when the feeling of stagnation comes along, the feeling of failure, the feeling of depression. All of those things like start building up on you, and then you start to feel like something has got to give. And and so growth is very important, and it's deep-seated in, inside of us. And uh, as much as we like our comfort zone, at the same time, we have this internal tug of war where there's a human need to grow, but at the same time, you don't want to risk anything because of fear. And yeah. so you're constantly stuck in the middle, and that's a very um, – it's an unhealthy place to be. Absolutely. So uh, on, the, on, the, on the depression note that you mentioned, um, do you think that's part of this? Because uh, I know that, you know, from a, from a mental health perspective, um, depression has become an epidemic itself. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> there's so much. I mean, I've, I've, I've witnessed people in my family having depression. I've been diagnosed with depression in my younger years and um i i really wanted to understand why my brain was doing what it was doing and that's why you know i've got to where i am today um wanting to learn more about it do you think because we are holding on to the fear and the limiting belief that part of that debilitates the growth and 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 if we could actually let go of them that um we could actually get past the depression we could get past the uh, all the things that we don't know that we're stuck with? I think fear is part of it. And the the analogy I like to share with everyone is everyone keeps talking about the glass that's half empty or half full. Yeah. And I always teach my clients to overflow their cup on purpose. Yeah. And the point is not whether it's half empty or overflowing. The point is that it's refillable. The point is that it's your decision to make it overflow on purpose. And when it's overflowing, then you are naturally giving. You're not going from a half empty cup and giving some of that water to someone who needs it because that builds up resent. That builds up fear. That builds up depression. Yeah. And all those things go hand in hand. But if you're overflowing, then it doesn't matter if someone helps themselves to that water because you're doing it naturally. And so for me, that is the key to avoiding depression, is that you keep growing, you keep learning, and so your cup overfills all the time. Yeah. And so if you're constantly growing, then you really don't give yourself a chance to get depressed because you're learning and you're getting better and better each year on end. And, you know, I think the uh, what, is, what is so significant about what you're saying is um, – Everything that we currently want is outside of our comfort zone. And when you kind of, uh, you know, I find a lot of the time when I do speak to to a lot of people, they all know that, like as book knowledge. You know, we all know, yeah, 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 I'm supposed to be out of my comfort zone. Um, but very few kind of actively get <laughs> involved with what that feels like and what that is and how it behaves. And... Yeah, <laughs> I've in the last month I, I've I've posted because of COVID I've just been really busy and just doing as much as possible. Um, I posted on Facebook that uh, I feel like I live on the edge of my comfort zone the whole time, and when I get there, I'm like, okay, what's the next step, and what's the next? So you know, I I push myself the whole time. But um, do you also find that because I always share with people the degree of your discomfort is the the degree of the learning. So as much as you feel like you you kind of stepped into that absolute uncomfortable position, it's right there that the the flip side of that coin means you're learning so much more than you, what you actually anticipate you would learn. Absolutely. Do you also find that? So it's so it's a decision between being uncomfortable for learning something new that you didn't know before, and the discomfort that comes with being stuck in your stagnant discomfort zone. Yeah. And so, again, I'm going to use another little anecdote about a beggar's dog that was lying next to a beggar in the street and kid just kept on crying and the beggar wouldn't pay any attention to the dog. People would go and drop money into their hat until a businessman stopped and he said, do you realize your dog is crying? 
And the beggar says, yes. He says, but what is wrong with him? He says, well, he's lying on a nail. He says, well, why doesn't he move? He says, because the nail is not sharp enough. So people do not want to go past their comfort zone, the edge where you are living at, because the pain of the discomfort in the comfort zone, it's not sharp enough. It's not painful enough. When yeah. it becomes painful enough, they will go beyond that limit and they'll start learning new skills. They'll do new things because now they need to move. The pain of staying there is greater than the pain of having to learn new skills new skills and trying new things and don't you think that that is possibly one of the biggest debilitators that we have is just the the discomfort or the comfort with the discomfort that we have um because we we get oh. so comfortable in just recognizing you know I, I in terms of the country we live in and and what we what we sit up with <laughs> you know it's and not to have a political conversation but i think we are we we, we get so comfortable with being uh, uncomfortable that it, it's normal it's it's something we consider as normal yeah we tolerate the discomfort because it's what we've come to know and if you've come to know that for a long long time it becomes normal to you yeah so you know uh, one of the things that you want to share and this is uh, one of the things that people out there should know is and you know i also have a method of 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 looking at limiting beliefs but don't you want to just chat to us about um your process i mean you obviously don't have to do it online now but um yeah. what is that process and what does it look like when you go through a bit of a five-step process to to changing limiting beliefs because i think because it's a limiting belief we wholeheartedly hold on to it as if it's law um, and, you know, when you, again, on the flip side of the coin, when you get to that side and you go, wow, if only you could actually see what it is you're holding on to, because it somehow creates the existence of the reality you're living in. Um, if only you just got to letting go and just going, okay, I, I choose not to want to believe that anymore. Um, what is that process and um, how, what, what is it that you take people through? Okay, so I've simplified it to five steps because I know people are listening and not necessarily sitting with pen and paper. So the very first part is really just identifying the, the limiting belief or the fear. And the easiest way to do that is to start a sentence with, I am afraid of, and then complete the sentence. Yeah. And say, I'm afraid of losing my job during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so if that's what is limiting you from going out and looking for another job or doing something different or pursuing a different career for all that matter, then you label that. This is what it is, right? So that's the first yeah. step. Second step is you find all the little reference legs in your head that are supporting that belief. <laughs> so why do, you, why do you have that fear? Oh, no, because people have been retrenched all left, right, and center. Yeah. Oh, because my company doesn't have other positions. Oh, because our sales have dropped down through the through the floor and they cannot support me anymore. And so you find all these reasons to support that negative belief. Yeah. The next step is you discredit all of those references one by one. And you say, right, I work for the company, but they still haven't let me go. In fact, they're giving me more work to do. So they're actually valuing me and they are finding value in what I have to offer. Yeah. Our company has not let go of anyone. So why should I be afraid? And so you take each one of those reasons that you had and you find evidence for the opposite. Yeah. Because there is evidence. There's always yeah. evidence. And so you discredit everything that was holding up that negative belief. The next thing you do is you take that sentence. I'm afraid of losing my job. And so you take the sentence and you reword it to be positive. Yeah. And you say, I am grateful for the job that I have during this pandemic in COVID-19. And then step <laughs> five is you keep repeating the process because some of these limiting beliefs have been there for years and years and years. And so just a one-off exercise is not going to do it. You're going to have to repeat the exercise a few times and just remind yourself all the reasons you had to support it actually have been discredited. Yeah. And so you do that a couple of times 
And whenever you're feeling a bit down, you go back and, and even better, write it on a piece of paper so you don't forget them. Because <laughs> yeah. then that brings it into the conscious, right? We want to take the fears that are sitting in our subconscious and they are keeping us in chains. And we want to put it on paper and bring it into the conscious and make it real. I want people to learn the skill of facing their pain. It is yeah. the only way to get rid of pain. The only way to get rid of fear is action. So get a piece of paper and write these things down. And then when you're feeling fearful, read it again. Yeah. If there's a fear that's bugging you, do the same exercise. Yeah. And it's an extremely powerful way of doing it. And it depends on your personality as well. Some people are more visual. Some people are more auditory. Some people will like to use their hands. So for the visual people, I make things that disappear. A piece of paper mm -hmm. that gets burnt in a fire, a balloon that pops and disappears. Uh, for the auditory people, write it on a piece of paper and read it out loud. Have someone read it out to you. Video record it. Put it as a voice note on your phone and play it back yeah. to yourself. Yeah. Uh, and then for the kinesthetic people who like to be involved, actually do the exercise hands-on. Mm. And do it repeatedly. And even better, teach someone else how to do it too. Because when you become a teacher, then you really you learn more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I love that, that you're saying this. I, I think um, part, of, part of the pandemic, part of um, 2020, as much as there has been what it has been, um, I remember right in the beginning of the pandemic, my brain went into complete panic mode because for me, my business was all about being in front of people and yeah. doing training and and facilitating um and suddenly you know it's like well that's not allowed and i i literally for three weeks i i was <laughs> i was i'm like i was like okay well i'm done i'm giving up and then i i had a moment where i was going okay what is it that i don't know right now and 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 what am i not looking at yeah. um and it the moment i got uh, hold of it the moment i started going yeah that's that's the thing that's what i and it simply was be able to do this kind of thing and add value to people's lives um and that process that you just be i i i follow a very similar pro process to that and i think it's such a practical tool that you could do on a day-to-day -day basis make it part of your morning your morning uh, moment, right? Spending some time with yourself going, okay, cool. Is this still a thing that's coming up for me and start recognizing is in a difficult situation, does it, does it reoccur? Does it show up for me again and again, and just be more aware and self, uh, have that self acknowledgement of, ah, this is, this is the thing that I need to start paying attention to because, because it's a limiting belief. We, we believe that, that it's law. Um, yeah. and it, it's not, Right. So, uh, Dr. Metz, I think this is such a fascinating conversation. I love I love talking about this stuff. Um, in conclusion today, what could you what advice could you leave with people? Because um, because we all could do with advice, really. I think the best advice I can give people is to continue growing, to be honest with themselves and be kind to themselves. If they, you know, you mentioned earlier that you deal a lot with people with massive titles. At the end of the day, you can have is more degrees than a thermometer on your business card. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're a human being, right? So it means that you have feelings. It means that there will be times when you feel vulnerable. You might choose not to show it, but you know that they are there. You know that there are limiting beliefs. So be honest with yourself and accept them and work through them. Work through the pain. Don't try and avoid it. If you're trying to avoid it and bury it in the sand and hope that it never grows again, it's not going to work for you. You really need to take it on heads on. And that's when you reach out to people like us, where we have a couple of techniques available. Yeah. Um, and yes, it will be uncomfortable initially, but I'd rather be uncomfortable with dealing with a limiting belief for a couple of weeks than be uncomfortable for the rest of my life. And that's really the choice you're making. And yeah. so take, take it head on. You've survived everything that life has thrown at you before. You'll survive this one too. 
And so you can move forward through that and understand that you need to bring it into the conscious mind. So that's why I want you to take it head on. So mm. sitting there and just thinking about it is not good enough. I want you to actually sit down and write it on a piece of paper and take it head on. Yeah. And, and continue to grow throughout life. For me, never stop growing. The day you stop growing is the day you die. So choose something that you don't know about. It can be a small thing or a big thing. It could be a something that's serious or it can be something that brings you pleasure. So, for example, I've grown my business now during the COVID-19 pandemic by focusing on the business end of it, but I've also grown on the pleasure side by taking on photography with my daughter. Mm. And so you can do it both ways. You have yeah. a choice, but keep learning. There will always be things you don't know, and that's the marvel of and the excitement of life is that you keep discovering all these new cool things, and so you put yourself in a better space every day. Yeah, I, I mean... I... I know I've, I, we, we're almost at the end of our conversation here, but, you know, it, it, it still stems down to the, the reticular activation system, your RAS, where you kind of focus, where your focus is, that's where your focus goes. And it, the more you focus on it, the more you find supporting evidence for it, right? So, yes. like, the more you kind of start making that shift and actively get involved with where it is you're focusing and where you're spending your time, you know, that's why you get the results. I, I give you a practical example I was sitting with my daughter on Sunday and it was just a case of going, she's constantly on uh, TikTok and she's doing lots of TikTok dances. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we need to like stop with the TikTok for, for the day. It's Sunday. We're going to read today. So, so eventually we st sat there reading and I, I kept going, uh, how do I make this moment bigger than just sitting and reading? And I was like, ah, oh, okay, I'm going to read a chapter. She's going to read a chapter and we're going to teach each other what we learned. And we had, now that you say, you know, like grow, you're taking up photography with your daughter. Uh, I was just thinking it was such a beautiful moment for me to, we just sat and read there for about an hour, but yet the learning that she, she got um, and that she shared with me and that we sort of chatted about became exponential. And in that little bit of time that we spent, there was such growth just within just sharing, well, what did you learn? What did you learn from whatever you're reading? So... Dr. Metz, I think it's such a, a, a an awesome, awesome thing that you do and a conversation to have. Um, tell us if we want to get hold of you, where do we go? Where's the website um, and how do we get a hold of you if we need to to chat? Okay, so I'm online. I've got a website, uh, drmatzcoach.co.za. Uh, one word. Lowercase. And it's M-A-T-S, right? Dr. Matt's Coach. M -A -T -S. M -A -T -S. Yeah. Correct. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, Dr. Matt's Coach as well. Um, if you want to, if you're a LinkedIn person, you can go on LinkedIn. I've got a profile there too. Um, I also teach via New Insights uh, Africa. I'm a VIP certified life coach, so I'm on the life coach directory. Um, Fantastic. If you go onto Amazon.com, you'll find my book there as well. Uh, Life outside your comfort zone. So I'm all over the place. I'm really available. That's fantastic. It's Dr. Matt's app at Zedis. Am I saying it right? App at Zedis? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, go and check it out. Um, uh, all this information that we shared today will be in the description box below. If you want to get in touch with either one of us, we'll, we'll be there. Um, uh, numbers, emails, uh, addresses, all of those things. Dr. Matt, thank you for chatting to us and thank you for making the time. I, that was so much fun. And uh, hopefully we're going to have you back for some more. With pleasure, anytime. Give me a call. I'll be here. Love being here. Thank you. Fantastic. Have a lovely day. I'll chat to you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.